This is Hope Cove in Devon, and it's the location of a great white shark sighting that was deemed credible by the former chairman of the Sharks Trust, Richard Pearce. And it's not the only one. In fact, there's been numerous credible sightings of great whites in British waters, and even photo evidence that had split the scientific community. So how many great white sightings have been reported in the UK? What evidence do we have of their presence, and are our waters really suitable for great white sharks? I'm going to explore the answers to all those questions, as well as understanding whether our waters might be becoming more appealing for great whites. And I'll show you the most credible photo evidence we have of great whites in our waters. But to do that, first I need to get off this headland. The most important thing in all of this discussion is whether great white sharks could realistically survive here in the first place. I've been doing quite a lot of research into this topic and the answer might surprise you. So before we start looking at a map of great white sightings, let's first understand whether the UK has all of the factors that a great white needs. Now, the first obstacle that springs to my mind when thinking about whether our seas are suitable for great white sharks is the water temperature. If great whites can't survive within the UK sea temperature range, then these sightings can't really have much credibility. And it's a really important question because most sharks are cold-blooded, meaning they can't self-regulate their own temperature. They're reliant on the ambient heat of the water that surrounds them. And so they have to stay in warm waters. Take the great hammerhead shark as an example. They're another large apex predator, but they're restricted to waters between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. So they're only really found in tropical zones, which we can see from this map of their habitation. There's no chance of them migrating here to our colder waters. But that's not true for the great whites, because they belong to the 1% of shark species that are warm-blooded just like humans. That means they're able to survive in a far wider range of water temperatures. Typically, anywhere from a very cold three degrees Celsius to a nice and warm 27 degrees. So the obvious question is, does that make UK waters suitable? Well, here's a chart showing the average sea temperature off the coast of Plymouth per quarter for the last three years. And this green band shows the required water temperature for great white sharks. It's basically perfect for them. Now, Plymouth is on the south coast of the UK, so it gets some of the warmest sea temperatures in the country. And there will be months, particularly in northern Britain, where water temperatures probably get a little bit too cold. But overall, it's a great match. In fact, all the other species in that 1% group of warm-blooded sharks are frequently spotted in UK waters. So there's really no reason why sea temperatures should be an obstacle for great white sharks. And if ocean temperatures continue to increase, it should only make our waters more habitable for great whites year round. A scary thought perhaps. But suitable sea temperatures alone won't bring great whites here. There's another crucial element, and this one isn't quite as simple to measure. As you'd imagine, a big shark needs big prey. Seals are the perfect prey for great whites, and it's their favorite source of food. And we do have seals, predominantly the common seal and the grey seal. In fact, the British Isles are home to 40% of the worldwide grey seal population. So all that sounds pretty good news if you're a great white shark. But the thing is, seals aren't the only large mammal found in our waters. There's always a bigger fish. Even in this case, it's technically not a fish. Orcas, otherwise known as killer whales, are great whites' only natural predator. And there's a pod of orcas which call the west coast of the UK their home. They're known as the West Coast Community. And some people think their presence might be the main reason great whites are put off from visiting our waters. However, I'm not actually very convinced. Not because an orca wouldn't kill a great white, they certainly would kill a great white. But when we actually take some time to look at all the areas of the ocean killer whales have found, there are loads of areas where both orcas and great white sharks co-inhabit. So if everything else was ideal for great whites, I think they'd still be here. And yeah, some would get eaten by orcas, but then some wouldn't. That's how nature works. So before looking at all the sightings and photo evidence of great whites, we need to revisit one of those key requirements. Because it's kind of important to understand what the barriers to a great white coming here might be before we start to look at what could be considered a credible sighting. I think we need to take a look back and the food supply. 
We've already discussed how great whites love nothing more than a juicy seal, and we do know we have lots of seals here in the UK. But if we look with a bit more nuance, we actually start to see that our numbers are really quite small when compared to other areas of the world. The total UK seal population is estimated to be around 180,000. It sounds like a lot, but as a comparison, Southern Africa, a hotspot for great whites, has a seal population of around 2 million. That's two million. That's over 10 times the numbers that we have. And while Southern Africa is a far, far larger expanse than the UK, it still wouldn't make much sense for a great white to migrate all the way up to the UK and colder waters for the prospect of way fewer seals, particularly if it's then gonna be attacked by orcas. And there's another massively important point to make about that UK seal population. And this is really vital to understand for when we look at the best photo evidence we have of great whites later in the video, because only a fraction of those 180,000 seals are thought to inhabit Southern Britain. The vast majority of the seal population are in Scotland, with some reports citing up to 90% where the water is colder and less appealing to a great white. That would leave just 18,000 seals for the whole of the rest of the British Isles. So it could be entirely possible that the quantity of food available in Southern Britain generally just isn't enough for a great white shark. And there's also another slightly depressing possibility for our lack of great whites, and that's our dwindling fish stocks. There's been a near epidemic of overfishing around the British coastline for decades, and this will inevitably have consequences on the wider ecosystem. Fewer fish means less food for seals and a lower seal population. It means less food for juvenile sharks and therefore a lower shark population. With species such as cod that were once considered plentiful, now considered threatened, it might just be that our seas are considered too dead for a large and hungry apex predator like the great white to warrant migrating all the way here and then be able to comfortably survive for extended periods. I think the issue is mainly a food supply issue. Now hold on to that thought and let's start looking at the location of some great white sightings. Whilst there have been no confirmed sightings of great whites on our coastlines, there have been a number of sightings reported. Wildlife conservationist and former chairman of the Sharks Trust, Richard Pearce, has led investigations over the last 15 years and followed up on nearly 100 claimed sightings of great white sharks around the British Isles. His conclusion is that 12 of these sightings remain credible and that some of those are likely to be the same shark, bringing the total number of potential individuals down to around seven, with one of those being at Hope Cove, where I was earlier. I'll show you the photo evidence for one of those sightings shortly, because it's that evidence which is crucial to understanding what's considered a confirmed sighting. For a confirmed sighting, there needs to be a quality photo or video evidence in which the shark can be categorically classified, and quite rightly so. But of course, when it comes to photographing ocean species, it can be tricky. There are creatures I've talked about on this channel where there's only ever been one or two confirmed sightings of them. So whilst those seven potential sightings don't constitute official proof of great whites, any lack of confirmed sightings is also not categorical proof that great whites don't visit our shores. Especially when we look at some other countries where there have been confirmed sightings of great whites. In 1977, a fisherman off the coast of La Rochelle in France caught a juvenile great white, which is about as confirmed a sighting as you can possibly get. Great whites will swim thousands of miles in search for hunting grounds. As we can see from this tracking data for a great white roaming along the American coastline. So the distance from La Rochelle to the English Channel is near enough a trip to the corner shop for a great white shark. And great whites are spotted all the time off the coast of Canada. In fact, two great whites were tracked down earlier this year in the Gulf of St. Lawrence near Quebec. Now you're probably thinking, what does Canada have to do with the UK? But the reason it's interesting comes back to that point on water temperatures. With the Canadian coastline experiencing similar temperatures to the UK, and in fact the Gulf of St. Lawrence, where the sharks have just been spotted, tends to have colder waters than southern Britain. And then when we look at a map of great white habitation, it becomes somewhat striking that Britain is this strange anomaly, with the habitation area suddenly curving south and missing the UK entirely. Again, all the data indicates that water temperatures are not a limitation to great whites visiting our coastline. And although our food supply isn't great here, there is still a food supply. And that's why many shark scientists do believe 
the Great Whites have visited our shores. But just before we take a look at the most credible of those UK sightings along with the photo evidence, there's one last super important factor to mention for why the odds of seeing Great Whites in UK waters are just so low. Estimates of global great white numbers range from around 3,500 to 5,000. On the grand scale of things, that's a tiny number for a global population. And there are a number of reports that think that that 3,500 to 5,000 estimate is actually over optimistic. The reason they're so low is that shark numbers in general, and especially the great whites, have been hammered worldwide, mainly as a result of extreme overfishing. So it kind of makes sense that the fewer sharks there are, the less the likelihood that they venture beyond their normal habitation. With such small numbers of great whites in the first place, the odds of a great white coming to UK waters, then being spotted at the surface, then the spotter getting out that phone and taking a photo, and that photo being good enough to be considered confirmed evidence, are just really small, particularly given phone cameras have only been commonplace for 10 to 15 years. But that doesn't mean we don't already have a photo of a great white visiting the UK coastline. This picture was taken by fisherman George Carter off the northeast of Scotland, and it's one of the most credible claims to a great white shark being spotted off the British coast. It features a shark caught in his fishing net, and the context of this story is where everything we've already discussed about the requirements for great white sharks starts to come together. This event happened during a 2003 heatwave, which saw the hottest temperatures ever recorded in Scotland since records began, and which would have undoubtedly raised the sea temperatures, making them more appealing to great whites, and therefore the shark would be more likely to venture up to northern Britain. And we've already discussed Scotland is where the vast majority of our sea population is found, with around 160,000 of them. All of a sudden, this area of the North Sea becomes the perfect habitat for a great white. And we get a photograph of what looks like a great white at the exact same time. That doesn't seem to be a coincidence. And it isn't just the fisherman who thought this shark was a great white. This picture was evaluated by two world-renowned shark experts, Ian Ferguson and Leonard Campagno who independently said that had this picture not been taken in Scotland, they would have instantly identified that shark as a great white. The very fact that there hasn't yet been a confirmed sighting of a great white in the UK is one of the main reasons why they were so hesitant to confirm that picture as a great white, which is kind of ironic. But to be fair, this photo just doesn't display enough of the shark to be considered concrete evidence for a confirmed sighting. Even so, Ian and Leonard concluded that there was a 60% likelihood that shark is a great white, and a 40% likelihood that it's a short fin mako. Unfortunately, we'll never know for sure, but there's a good chance that we won't have to wait very long for a confirmed sighting, as great whites might be making their way to our coastline sooner than anyone thinks. The rapid decline in many fish stocks is slowing, Indeed, some species are starting to see their numbers increase. And if we can move towards a future with more conservation-minded fishing processes, we'll start to see huge changes to the ecology of our oceans. More fish means more general life in the ocean. It would mean more seals and it would mean more sharks. So if we do continue to move forward with more sustainable practices in fishing and give our sea life a chance to recover, I think that we will see confirmed sightings of great whites here in the future. It might be two years, it might be 20 years, but far from being a sign of terror, it'll be a great sign that our seas are starting to recover. Whilst we might be waiting a while to see great whites in our waters, there are other dangerous creatures which are already making their way here in their hundreds, maybe even thousands. Last year saw huge numbers of Portuguese man o' war on our coastlines. And the reason why is probably not what you think. So to learn more about why this deadly creature has been visiting UK shores, you need to watch this video here with research into the rapid increase of man of war sightings in the UK that you won't find anywhere else.